Welcome to another episode of the Ever Black Podcast, proudly brought to you by Blacklight Art Design and RW Promotion. I'm your host, Nev. On this episode, we are joined by Dennis Lixon from Refused, who will be releasing their new album, War Music, this Friday, October 18. Now, Refused are, without a doubt, one of the most influential bands on the planet, and their album, The Shape of Punk to Come, was just groundbreaking and ahead of its time. I mean, everyone knows the song New Noise, and you pretty much can't see Rage being hosted without some band or artist putting uh, that song in the playlist, or even it being used in movie trailers and movies and TV shows, and uh, it's probably one of the best songs ever written. It's um, it's, a, it's an absolute classic, but the new album War Music, uh, though, it's, it's right up there, and a lot of people would say that's probably a big call, but it's true. The uh, record is really fucking good, and it's super pissed off and honest and full of energy, and uh, as much as I like their last album, Freedom, uh, I think War Music recaptures what the band are about and uh, makes a pretty big statement. It's really, really good. Uh, Dennis, uh, though, is just a great guy, and I've had him on the show a couple of years ago, and uh, even though uh, he's this monster front man, he's just super chill and happy to hang and, and talk about music and we even get a little nerdy talking about star wars figures and movies and stuff it was a it was a really fun chat you can pre-order war music now and get the singles revolution one blood red and economy of death before it drops this friday turn it up really loud and uh, get into it you guys are gonna love it i love it um, i can't wait to uh crank it on my way to work it's an amazing amazing album all right before we get into the episode i uh, just want to give a shout out to tim price from the faction who uh has been airing our interviews of late and if you're not aware of what the faction is it's a heavy music radio station that plays not only some of the biggest bands in the world but uh also throws us upon a lot of upcoming bands as well and uh, australian music you can download the app from the App Store or head to thefaction.live for more info and get into it. Also, I want to give a shout out to our friends at Blacklight Art and Design who are our go-to for all our screen printing needs. They've done all our shirts and hats for Ever Black Media and they're really great guys. www.blacklightad.com.au uh, Also, uh, our friends at RW Promotion who are the best in the biz when it comes to stickers, flyers, banners, badges and all other promo you need for your band or business. Go check them out at www.rwpromotion.com.au. You can now subscribe to us on Spotify and Spreaker, iTunes, Podcast and YouTube. And of course, uh, we're throwing them up on uh, Facebook as well. We've got heaps more interviews on the way. I've got a massive list to get through and uh, it's about to get really heavy. Got some really heavy episodes coming up, which is uh, pretty damn cool. And if you've got a moment, uh, feel free to leave us a review and share our stuff. We really appreciate that. Uh, every bit helps and uh, keep, helps us to keep going. Thanks very much, guys. All right, here is my interview with Dennis Lixon from Refused. War Music comes out this Friday. Get into it. Haunts I enjoy. Hey, Dennis, how are you, mate? I'm fine, how are you? Yeah, good, bro. Well, the new Refused album, War Music, is incredible. The riffs on this thing, absolutely monstrous. And you sound just amazing, man. Your voice is awesome on this. And I love it. Well done. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're quite uh, we're quite happy with the, with the record, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> what was the driving inspirational force behind this one? Was there a particular event that set it all off you creatively and lyrically? Not really. I mean, it's it's. I think that um, just the idea that if always if we want to continue to be a band, we have to stay relevant to who we are and relevant to ourselves. And mm. like, there's so much uh, there's so much creative energy in this group, and um, it was just you know we were done with the freedom cycle and we were you know just puttering about, and then all of a sudden like Chris and David sent us to. They send us the actually blood red and turn the cross, and they're like, "We got some new songs we're working on." And everyone's like, <laughs> "Yep, yep, all right." I think, "Yep." So I mean, it's just one of those deals. And then uh, me and David met up, and we talked about like um, directions to go with the record lyrically, and um, we decided. I mean, it, we have to make a record uh, that's very much a product of this this time and place that we live in, and you know, so. Mm. Um, once the music started coming out, it was fairly easy to sort of, uh, you know, make the words and the ideas to sort of uh, coalesce with the music because it's, it's a, quite of a, uh, there's a lot of uh, aggressive riffs on it. 
so it was easy to sort of put the, the you know, the ideas to it. So it, it was fairly, the, uh, the, the conceptualization was fairly easy, but then it took us a long time to just finish the record because, you know, because of who we are. <laughs> Some of the voice, even, it, it some of the songs, how would I describe it? It's like arena rockish, even. Some of them. Yeah, I mean, uh, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's a very, it's a tight and focused record. It's very economical. Just not mm. a, there's no fluff on it, you know? No. But yeah, maybe there are parts of it that, that's big and grandiose in a way, but I, I, I think it's also probably our most aggressive record, I think. Oh, totally. It's a really pissed off album, yeah. and I love that, but. It yeah. sounds like it would fill a stadium really well, as well. Yeah, maybe we'll we'll see if that uh, it, 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 it make that into a thing, like become a, a stadium hardcore band. We're a few of those. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I mean, we like the um, we, we like the that that grandeur of, of you know the scale of that thing. I mean, it was weird because I mean, we used to be a mid mid level hardcore band, and then you yeah, know, yeah. with, with people come to come and everything that happened. I mean, we are, I mean, semi big rock band. So I think that that kind of shines through a little bit, but I mean, I think one of the things for us with this record, both like musically and, and lyrically was that we want to kind of show people where we're coming from. Like what's our background? Cause I think maybe with shape becoming the phenomenon, it was a lot of people that, uh, discovered shape and discovered, you know, us through new noise. Maybe they weren't that clued in on on our background and like our political ideas mm. and you know all that stuff. So I think that this time around it's really important for us to kind of showcase that and be like, this is this is this is who we are. This is where we come from. You know, these ideas that you hear on this record, same ideas that made Shape a Punk that that record that was. You know? So is it? Yeah, I think that was an important aspect of this record as well. I agree, man. Like I, I love. Uh, Shave Punk, like every, like that's such a great album. But this, I think, it really stands up against it, man. To be honest, it's a really, really strong album. And I'm not just saying yeah, that. Like, I think so as too. a as yeah. a fan, I dig this album a lot. Yeah, but I think it's one of those deals too, where we made freedom, and it was a it, let's say it was a mixed reception on what mm-hmm. what people were expecting, or you know. Yeah. But I think it's also now it's like in people's minds, the comparison to what we're doing is not only freedom, but also, you know, like they can look at freedom and shape and be like, okay, because there, now there's more of a, an arc that people can understand. Yes. I think when freedom came out, a lot of people were a bit surprised. But for us, there was a record where we had to kind of find our footing again and be like, okay, mm. well, how do we create music together? Because we hadn't for such a long time. And uh, now when, when you see it in, in the context of war music, I think a lot of people are like, oh, that makes sense. It's, it is what we would say a transitional record. And then with war music, I think we definitely found, we definitely found our footing. We definitely found like uh, what, what the essence of refused in, in, in 2019 is. You know? What message are you hoping people take away from this album? <laughs> <laughs> well, capitalism... Bad, refused, good. I think that <laughs> good, good message. <laughs> but uh, I mean, you know, I think it's the record in itself is pretty. Uh, you know, with everything that we're singing about, all these ideas, it, it's a pretty clear what we want to get across with it. But on the other hand, it's also the idea that it's art, so you kind of choose and you decide what you want to take from it. Because, I mean, I, I know there's people out there that are huge fans of refused and not necessarily fans of politics, which I think is a is a somewhat frustrating aspect of art, but it's mm. also a beautiful aspect of art that we can sort of, uh, you know, pick and choose what we feel is um, relevant to, to ourselves, you know? So, I mean, if, if our idea about this new record is like, okay, here's an explicit of... of, of uh, Late era capitalism, you know, and, and and the violence of the world and everything goes on. Um, it's, that doesn't mean that uh, that's what other people are going to pick up on on the record. You know, as you said, maybe it's just the riffs or my screaming or whatever. In regards to you know the 
the art side of things. It seems that everything that's going on at the moment with Trump, climate change and social media and everything being, it seems like it's really fueling art at the moment. Are you, you kind of getting that, that, that it's inspiring a lot yeah, of people to stand up? I, I think so, and I hope so. I mean, it, it's a weird climate because, uh, as you said, with like the, the climate change, and you have Trump, and you have Boris Johnson, and you have Brexit, and you have all these different things that are happening that are a bit scary, you know, a bit, bit out of control, basically. And also you have, as you said, like if there's a social media climate where a lot of uh, right-wing people are the alt-right in fashion. They're really good at using uh, social media. But it also means that a lot of people's um, political ideology or agendas are based on Twitter feeds, basically. You know, yeah. and they're not based on on a deep seated ideology. They're based on like Twitter twi- tweets and and like headlines, because that's kind of how people um, consume information these days. And I think there's a reaction towards that, I think there's a reaction where we're saying, like, if we want to talk about these issues, if we want to be political, if we want to be conscious, we have to dig deeper and we have to sort of, like, really make art matter. And I think that, mm-hmm. that, that there's definitely a reaction. I mean, also, I mean, just, just look at this uh, climate change movement that's happening right now. That's, that's like the, that's the biggest political mass movement in, in the past 20 years or something like that. And I think that's, I mean, of course, it's it's a reaction to everything that goes on with the climate, but everything that goes on with the climate is connected to this idea of, of, of eternal growth of capitalism. You know, and, and mm. the, the effort to even said that in the UN, she's like, you can't, you know, th- this world that we live is living right now, is, uh, it, it, it doesn't work, you know. So I think that, a lot of this is reactions to, to a capitalist reality that we live in, and I think that's a good thing. And uh, in regards to the, the opening track, which is absolutely cool, that's, who sings the female parts on that? Is it Revolution 1 or Rev 001? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rev, well, Rev, Revolution 1, yeah. yeah. Uh, her name is Mayim, and she, she did, she done some records uh, under the name Mayim the Believer. She also has a band called Wild, Peace, Wild Birds and Peace Drums. And she's just a friend of ours, and uh, yeah, we just uh, we wrote that part for for her to sing, and she nailed it in like a second. And it was really cool. Yeah, it's awesome, and, and I love the video too. I mean, yeah. you got some pretty mad dance moves, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was weird because uh, obviously those guys that I'm dancing against, they're all professional dancers. <laughs> so <laughs> it was it was quite an interesting day where, where they showed up, and I mean, Chris directed the video, and he was like, "Okay, you're gonna be." Dressed as like these neo fascist guys, and you're gonna have a dance off against Dennis. They're like, "What?" The hell? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, I think it turned out it turned out great. I think you know you get the idea behind it, and and um, two great videos. And, and these these times when you don't really there's not a lot of money uh, yeah. to, to make videos. I think it turned out really well. I think it's it's a fun video to watch, and you know, so. It's, some good action going on. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who else is a good uh, a dancer? Is uh, Pelly from the Hive. I yeah, think yeah, yeah. You and him. What if it was a, a dance off between you and him? That would set the internet into a meltdown. Maybe, yeah. I'll ask him if we can do that one. One of these days. I mean, we're good friends. He's singing on the record. He's singing, is he now? Singing, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. He's he's doing background vocals in one of the songs. So yeah, yeah, we're good friends. We, we might have to do a dance off one of these days. I think, as you said, I think it'd be good. I think a lot of people have waited for that dance off. I might have to make that happen. I think <laughs> so, man. I think you know, I you know, we can place our bets. We can. Uh, it would be a uh, an event, man. Countdown clock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do it like. Uh, yeah, yeah, like the, they did that. Uh, the whole thing between Jordan Peterson and Slavoj Sisek, like the the, the battle of the. Uh, you know, the, the intellectuals will do the battle of the rock, you, you know, dancers. <laughs> See? See? Sells itself, man. Yeah, yeah. Itself. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Absolutely. You know what? I, I saw also, I saw a picture of, uh, on your Instagram. It was you with Ecto-1 from Ghostbusters. Now, I'm a, I'm a massive nerd. How nerdy does your nerdiness yeah. go? It, it goes pretty deep. I mean, I have to admit, it's, it's like one of those things when you're, um, you know, you're this singer of a cool rock band, but then you have to admit to yourself that I'm a nerd. I mean, I'm a, I'm one of, the, I'm a super record collector. I'm like a movie nerd and 
just the nerd in general. I, I did, for a long time, I, did, I didn't want to think that I was a nerd, but then I was like, yeah, I'm kind of a nerd. And I have, I have two <laughs> younger brothers, and they're super nerdy. They're they're uh, nerdier than me, but we have a nerd gene in our family, I guess. So, yeah. <laughs> it goes pretty deep. <laughs> so are you a action figure collector as well? Does it go that far? Mm, no, not really. I use, I have a, I have a, all right, so I have the, the seventies Kenner Star Wars toys. I have all of those complete with weapons, but uh, not really. I mean, uh, I'm, I, I collect. I, I made a conscious decision to only collect records, basically, which is that takes up a lot of my time. But it's like you know the you know the old joke. You you know what the difference between a Trekkie and a record collector is? What's that? Record collector thinks they're cool. <laughs> I like that. See, oh, let's see, and <laughs> yeah. it's, a dark, it's a it's a deep dark rabbit hole. The collector, because I I collect a few things myself, so it, uh, I definitely yeah. know. You know how? how it is. Yeah. Oh, I know, man. I know the bane of my wife's security. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, back to yeah, of course, it's, it's tricky. Yeah, it is, yeah. man. Uh, of course, I mean, this is your second album since you reformed back in 2012. Seven years in, yeah. I think it's safe to say that Refused are alive and well, and I think it's time the people get past it. You've gotten back together, and it's accepted. Here you are to stay. Is that right? You're not going away? Yeah, I think so, too. No, well, you know, but in life, generally, but, but no, not for a while, I hope. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and I, I, and I think that's the thing, too. Like, it's like, you don't have to, I mean, that's the thing about life. You don't have to like whatever people does, but this is our band. And this is what we want to do. And this is kind of like, you know, our attempt at making sense of this world and our music. And uh, I think with, as you said, it's the second record back. It's like we've been around for a while. You know, people just have to accept that, that this is the band that we are now. This, these are the people that we are. So I think that's a good thing. And I, it feels, as I, get, I mean, warm music, I think it's great. And I think that uh, a lot of people would, would get it. Maybe a couple of people that didn't get freedom will definitely get warm music. I think it's a good um, future. is looking pretty, pretty good for us. Yeah, I agree, man. But uh, what about Australian tour? Yeah. I'm going to put you on the spot. You coming back? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's it up to me. I'll be in Australia once a year. But uh, you know, <laughs> I love to tour Australia. So I would say we're we're coming to Australia next year. I'll actually make that promise. Yeah. I'm not sure when, but next year we'll be in Australia for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's, you know, I love to tour Australia. It's one of my favorite places to go and tour. So, yeah, I'll, I'll make sure we come down there. I'm glad you made that promise. It's, uh, it's all recorded now. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Now it's like I can't, I can't retract on it. It's, it's no uh, back it out. It's recorded, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Now, a little yeah. funny thing before I, I let you go is the album comes out on October 18th, right? That's my wife's birthday. Yeah. When I met my oh, wife... Really? Yeah, yeah. This is this is this is where it gets weird. When I met my wife many many years ago, she was wearing a international Co- noise conspiracy hoodie. I was as well. We were both at the same show in Brisbane at Livid. Didn't even know it. Wow, that's weird. That's that's trippy. But I mean, it then then it was meant to be. You know, yeah. it all it all connects. I mean, I'm not I'm not a incredibly spiritual person, but I do believe that sometimes things just connect. And sometimes there's energies out there and then it's meant to be and that, that's awesome. <laughs> that makes me very happy. Yeah, man. Well, I mean, it's sort of like you've, yeah. you've been woven in to our lives musically over the yeah, years. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I, I like that. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad I get to be a part of uh, your relationship in a, in a positive way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Next you'll be moving in. Oh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if I need a place to stay in Australia, I'll come by. Yeah, there yeah, we'll adopt yeah, you. Perfect. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Well, Dennis, thanks again for taking the time to hang out with us again. War Music comes out on October 18, and we sure as hell hope to see you and boys next year, very, very soon. Yes, we'll be down there. And thank you for having me. And have a have a good good night over there. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, night, and you enjoy your day. I hope you get a nap. Yeah. Yeah. yeah cool. All right. <laughs> have a good one. Talk to you soon. <laughs>